That was me doing the recording. And now you can do yours in double. Yeah. So hello and welcome today to Wilhelm, who will be talking about what makes us build for this, given the work that he does with people. So quick introduction, first of all, uh, to you, please. Sure, my name is Wilhelm, my surname is Hast. I live in Sweden and I work with leadership. I do a lot of work with corporate clients and delivering coaching and training programs in uh, how to uh, expand one's leadership and, and have a productive uh, approach to life. Cool. And the question that we're asking everyone in this series is, what do you notice in the work that you do that make that we as human beings are built for this, given the challenges that we're now facing in today's world? Well, interesting question. We are built for this in the sense to me that if we have an awareness of how thought functions and how our minds work, there is a lot of interesting things to see about the nature of being human, and especially in times like this. There is, in my experience, in my field of work, not so much awareness about the design of the mind and uh, the fact of thinking, but a lot of other approaches deal with a lot of stuff. But once we start to notice the design of the mind, there are a few very interesting things to see, especially at times like this. Tell us more about what you see about the design of the mind. Well, uh, in the mind, there is thoughts going on all the time. And it's interesting to watch um, how experience shifts many times during the day without circumstances necessarily shifting. So let's say there is a difficult circumstance of any sort business-wise, let's say, and it can look extremely challenging and difficult 10 o'clock in the morning, but one o'clock later in the day, it feels like an ordinary work day and there is something to be resolved. Uh, when the mind gets too busy and to wound up and we overthink, we seem to tense up and slip into frustration and worry and concern. And when our mind is less busy, when there's less thinking going on, so to speak, we naturally seem to fall back in a more creative, open, constructive space. Now, you and I work, and, and Charlie are too, work in a quite a similar field with this understanding in, in the business world. The question I often get asked is, well, if overthinking is the problem, what do I do about that? And I'd love your take on that. Oh, you stop thinking. Oh, really? <laughs> Lovely. I'll do that. <laughs> no, it's half a joke, but it's uh, kind of true also. Now, what, what's been helpful for me is um, when... Corona started to hit the country where I live in Sweden. There was a huge impact in the field of work I do, which is mostly um, training in live rooms with people. We do quite a bit of online training too, but we lost 90%, 90% of our business from mid-March through June. It was just wiped out in 10 days, right? And then, of course, what should we do now? We are team employees and it was very challenging business-wise, and I could observe myself going in and out of frustration and uh, not so much worry, but I tensed up. Like I wanted to see solutions. I wanted to move forward. I wanted to know what to do. Hmm. But obviously I couldn't know what to do because we never experienced anything like it in 20 years. So, what I noticed, there was actually some coaching I got myself from somebody uh, who has a similar approach, I noticed that some things I was really clear about. I just knew what to do. Instantly, I knew if we do this for the customers and we do this with some other thing, that can't go wrong, so let's start that now. And we have started for two days. And other things, when I thought about them, I felt tense, frustrated, concerned, worried, and I could notice my mind was desperately trying to figure out and analyze what would happen if. 
But in this situation, none of us can figure out some things. How would it look for weeks from now? We have no idea and we had no idea. Mm. So I kind of took on almost like a little game for myself. And I spoke to my team also that let's try this out. When we have clarity and we have this inner knowing that what we're about to do, we can stand for it. We trust that it takes us in a good direction. Let's not overthink, but let's get into action. And if we are facing choices that we don't see clearly, let's not overanalyze, rev up our minds, try to figure it out. Let's pause it for a day or two and come back to it. And just go with the flow of clarity that's very recognizable for most people that I work with. Because we have some gut feel, intuition, common sense, inner wisdom, whatever we call it. And we can trust that pretty much. So that's how you think less. You notice where you're clear, you move forward, you notice when you're unclear, and you kind of leave that in the back of your head until you get clarity about it. It's a really nice thing to remember, isn't it? That when we're not clear, more thinking probably doesn't do it any good. No, I mean, that's, put it back. that's what's so commonsensical, but difficult to see once when you haven't seen it, that if you're frustrated and put more thinking on top of frustration, what happens, you get more frustrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I am impatient and try to think more and quicker and faster, I get more impatient. And so <laughs> in a non-productive, I don't like the word state necessarily, in a no, non-productive experience of life, if you add more thinking, you rarely get more productive. It's actually the other way around. Yeah. What I, what I love about that or what I want to highlight about that is for me, I, I don't know how you experience it in your team, Wilhelm, but sometimes that just feels counterintuitive. Like I, I remember in the past, I would think, I do need to add more thinking on top of that because that's, mm. I thought that that was my way out yes. uh, of the frustration. And what you're saying is for a lot of people who maybe are listening is counterintuitive to what they've been thinking in the past, which is the pull back from that. So how, how did your team experience that? Like what was, what happened from there? Are we, Our creativity has increased enormously over the last couple of weeks. And not in a forced way, but more in, in a natural way. We have been working in the field of online training for quite some time, but we've been more inventive and creative in the last three, four weeks than we've been probably in months before. And it's not forced, it's just... I love this metaphor of, or analogy that if I'm standing at the bus stop, and I see somebody on the bus stop that I recognize, oh, I know this person really well. I spent time with, together with him or her like 20, 30 years back. Mm -hmm. But who is it? I can't figure out the name. They jump on the bus and disappear, so I can't ask them. In that moment, I have two choices. I either try to figure it out and think really hard to find the name. That never works out well. Because <laughs> we get stuck, right? Or I kind of go, okay leave it for now, I'm sure that name will pop up. And sure enough, 99 times out of 100, within a couple of days, when we the least expect it, oh, that was Anders, we spent time in high school, my God, his brother was, mm -hmm, and the whole thing comes together, right? Mm -hmm. That's not only for people at bus stops, that's the design of the human mind. We have a problem solving machine between our ears, actually if you speak business language. Mm. It's like our mind is made for problem solving and creativity and other things. But it doesn't work when it's under stress and pressure. It works when we trust, just like I find that name on the guy in the bus stop, I will figure out a solution to the fact that 90% of the business is gone. We need to recover probably 50, 60 to have a business in June still. 
and I don't see what to do. And I know human beings are super creative if we don't force it, but kind of lean towards trust. And of course, since I'm in the business world, there's a healthy balance here, right? Because sometimes I need to take out the Excel sheet and do some mapping. And, but we mostly know where that balance is if we know we're built for this. We're built for finding new ways in situations and dilemmas where we don't see the way out. I do that every week, any day. You do it too in your field of work, I'm sure. Business people, that's what they're good at. They are faced with challenges. They allow some clarity and insight to rise. And that's what they spend their weeks and months doing, but they do it more from, um, what should we say? Many times without an awareness of how the mind actually works is a good way to put it. When you see that, it's a natural place to fall back into. Yeah. You know, there's, there's just some lovely things in what you've said there about our, that we are designed as human beings to be problem solvers and to be creative. Absolutely. And that is always in here and yet what we innocently do is try and use this mind and this brain that we've got in in a way that makes that more challenging for the mind we don't always catch on to that i think it's lovely just to see that more clearly yeah and i remember vividly being here in my office at home because i've been pretty much now this is six full weeks where i've been sitting in my office at home during the working week and that's very rare for me yeah. You know, beyond one week, that would be crazy. So the whole in-person training and flying around the world half my life, clearly that isn't happening right now. I remember you and I exchanging messages one Friday um, about, okay, now it's time to get creative. Let's see, <laughs> Let's see yeah. what happens. And I remember yeah. one morning here, um, really thinking hard about a specific thing that I couldn't see clearly. And I literally gave up. But I didn't know that's what I was doing. And I opened the door out to the garden and I just went, okay, I need to think about what's coming next anyway. Let me think about a different problem. And as soon as my attention went on to this other thing I needed to solve later on that day, the answer to the one I'd been trying really hard to solve for the previous, I don't know, 45 minutes, boom, yeah. really clear. It's an amazing thing to notice in my mind. It is. Yeah. It's it is and a point I'd like to make, because if you're in business and you're hearing this, it might sound a little too leaning back too much and, and might even sound almost irresponsible or, but it's not. It's um, many people live in a misunderstanding that well-being creativity is something they need to achieve. Mm. They have, an experience that they need to do stuff to feel well, to be well, that profound well being is kind of achieved by something. But the way it looks to me more and more, the longer you look and the year goes by, and I seem to see it deeper and deeper, profound well being is the starting point for human beings. Mm -hmm. It's what we fall back into naturally when we basically don't overthink or misunderstand where our feelings are coming from. So every day I noticed for probably 10 days or so, I had a big slump in the afternoon when I got worried, concerned. I was not in a good place for half an hour to an hour. But even in the midst of that, I have this insight that that's temporary. If I don't, try to figure it out too much during those times, I will naturally fall back into a healthy place again. I mean, psychologically, where well-being, perspective, and some, some kind of clarity, it's just naturally there. It's like the body is returning to health as much as it can biologically. Uh, even with viruses, the body is doing all it can to heal and fight back, right? Our psychology is the same. 
it diverts back to well-being and clarity naturally. It's not something I need to achieve. And that's the big difference. We are built to naturally fall back into well-being, clarity, creativity, a sense of trust, a sense of knowing that new ideas will come. And that's the human design. And having seen some of that are extremely helpful in times like this. Yeah. Can you think of an example where you've noticed that either for yourself, your team or your clients, where they've realized that for themselves to be true? Oh, sure. Um, one of my colleagues was struggling after we got our first real impact on the business for various reasons. So he had different kinds of uh, personal things to take care of also. So she was intensely challenged by three, four different circumstances during a very short time, I'm not to go into details, and financial impact and different kinds of things. So for about four or five days, she didn't show up as a leader. She was worried, concerned, stuck in details and I needed to catch myself not being frustrated because after all I'm actually her boss also so I, I should provide leadership but then I realized oh my god she is really more lost than I realized because she's a really good consultant and leader but it suddenly struck me wow she completely lost her foothold it seems like and I didn't catch it because we never met we just spoke online uh, so I had a heart to heart talk to her and basically shared what I experienced, that she really lost her foothold and that she was way more challenged than I realized. And I kind of apologized for not being more awake to where she was at. And in about 20 minutes, it's quite moving actually, she was back to her sense of leadership and self and creative and she woke up to the enormous amount of worry she started to have for her kids and, and some other things in life. And she just caught herself having been completely lost in her thought. And it isn't a four month process after that or two years something or 14 methods to apply. 20 minutes, the thoughts dropped off her busy mind and she woke up and said, yeah, God, I really lost myself, that's stupid. I should go to the hairdresser so I feel good again. I should do this, I should do that. And the next day she was just back on track like 10 days ago and has been since. She's more creative than, than me and my colleague are. Like today she has some great stuff that supported us immensely, although it was, was it two days ago we spoke? Feels like a week now. So my point is, when thought shifts, experience shifts. Yeah. It's, it's a matter of minutes. It's not the recovery process. And people who see this, I'm sure they recognize moments in their life when there was either danger or an emergency or a really difficult circumstance, but they kind of found themselves more present, more focused and more awake to life than normal. It has very little to do with circumstance, actually, when we examine it. And it has all to do with being curious about where what I'm actually experiencing in the moment is coming from. And it's definitely coming from thought way more than it looks. Yeah. That I know. Yeah. That's such a, a great example. And... I know, again, one thing that you've said there, as well as what you said earlier about problem solvers and creative by design, yes. is the fact that psychologically, clear and being psychological wellness is our default. And I think when we just grasp that, you're right, there's absolutely nothing for us to do to go back to equilibrium. Yeah. It's just the natural where we tend to go. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been an absolute joy. And um, when anyone wants to find more about Wilhelm and, and uh, your work and your company, we've included the link below. And Great. for all of you watching, um, delighted that you've spent this last 20 minutes with us. And there's a lot more um, 
short video conversations with people like Wilhelm who can just share more about the fact that we as humans are built for this in all aspects of life. Great, thanks for having me and great speaking to you, Jeff. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thanks.